This is part 77 of SQL Server tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss the difference between snapshot isolation and read committed snapshot isolation. This is continuation to parts 75 and 76, so please watch these videos before proceeding. We have the differences here in the table. Snapshot isolation is vulnerable to update conflicts, whereas read committed snapshot isolation is not. If you have a transaction that's using snapshot isolation, and if that transaction is trying to update a piece of data that another transaction is already updating at the same time, then an update conflict occurs and your transaction terminates and rolls back with an error. Let's look at that in action. I have two instances of SQL Server Management Studio here. We have this table TBL inventory, which is keeping track of how many iPhones we have in stock. At the moment, items in stock value is 10. And we have got two transactions here, transaction one on the left and transaction two on the right. Let's prepare our sample DB database to use snapshot isolation. To do that, we use this alt database statement. So let's go ahead and execute this one now. If you look at what this transaction 1 is doing, it's updating items in stock value to 8. And if you look at transaction 2, it's doing the same thing. It's also updating items in stock to a value of 5. Notice both of the transactions are trying to update the same piece of data. So let's go ahead and execute part of our transaction 1. Notice we have not executed commit transaction statement. That means transaction 1 is still in progress. Now let's go ahead and execute transaction 2. And look at what just happened. Transaction 2 is blocked. It will be blocked until transaction 1 completes. That's because transaction 2 is trying to update the same data that transaction 1 is updating at the same time. And just look at what's going to happen when we commit this transaction. So upon committing the transaction, transaction 1 has completed. So that means transaction 2 is unblocked, but it detected that another transaction was trying to update the same data at the same time. So there is an update conflict, and the transaction terminated, and it um, raised an error. Okay, So that's the behavior when we are using snapshot isolation and when two transactions tries to update the same piece of data at the same time, there will be an update conflict. Now let's see how the behavior is going to change when we use read committed snapshot isolation. So let's go ahead and prepare our database to use read committed snapshot um, isolation. So first of all, let's turn our off snapshot isolation and let's turn on read committed snapshot isolation. And to do that, we use this alt database statement. And look at this. When we try to execute this statement, it will be blocked because we will have to close all the other database connections. So let's close our transaction two window here. And that statement should complete. So let's fire up SQL Server Management Studio again. All right. Now we want this transaction to use read committed isolation level. And the same is the case for transaction two. So let's change the isolation level to read committed. And let's go ahead and set, you know, read committed as the transaction uh, isolation level for transaction one. So if we select the data from this table, at the moment items in stock is eight. So let's go ahead and change that to 10. And let's select the data just to make sure it's still 10. OK, so it's doing the same thing. Transaction 1 is trying to update it to 8, and transaction 2 is trying to update it to 5. And let's see what the behavior is going to be. So let's execute part of our transaction 1. So transaction 1 is still in progress. Now let's go ahead and execute transaction 2. Notice, as expected, transaction 2 is blocked. Now if we commit the transaction 1, Look at that, it completed successfully. And upon transaction one completion, transaction two also completed without any update conflict. So transaction one updated it to eight, and transaction two updated it to a value of five. So if we select the data now, it's going to be five, because transaction two is the one that has completed last. So 
with read committed snapshot isolation we don't have update conflicts but we do have update conflicts with snapshot isolation another difference is um, in our read committed snapshot isolation is going to work with existing applications without requiring any change to the application code whereas if you have to use snapshot isolation application change may be required to use with an existing application because if you want to use read committed snapshot isolation if your application is already using read committed isolation and if you want that to use read committed snapshot isolation then all the configuration that you have to do is in the database you will have to simply turn on read committed snapshot option and that's it now the read committed isolation level will be using read committed snapshot isolation meaning it will be using row versioning to read the committed data whereas if you have to use snapshot isolation then you will have to change the transaction isolation level every time to snapshot so you have to do that change within your application code if you have begun the transaction you know within your application so if you want to use snapshot isolation with your existing application then application change may be required depending on how you have coded that application but if you're using read committed you know as the default isolation level and if you want to use read committed snapshot isolation then all the changes in the DB okay we don't have to do any code change as far as the application is concerned now another difference is read committed snapshot isolation can be used with distributed transactions whereas snapshot isolation cannot be used with distributed transactions another important difference is read committed snapshot isolation provides statement level read consistency whereas snapshot isolation provides transaction level read consistency let's understand what we mean by this difference with an example so at the moment our database is using read committed snapshot isolation so let's change the value back to 10 and let's just select that to make sure and you know let's try and change it to a value of 8 uh, that's what transaction 1 is going to do and transaction 2 all it's going to do is issue two select statements so select star from TBL inventory where ID equals one and it's going to do the same thing okay <clears throat> and then we have our transaction one here and so let's go ahead and execute part of our transaction one so now if we select the data look at that items in stock is set to eight and then let's go ahead and execute our transaction to again I'm going to execute only part of this transaction too so we are executing only the first select statement and look at this what we get we get a value of 10 because that's the value that's committed in the DB at the moment and our isolation level at the moment is read committed since we have turned on read committed snapshot option it's using read committed um, snapshot isolation meaning use row versioning to read committed data okay so the last committed data is 10 alright now let's go ahead and commit this transaction one now when we commit this transaction now look at this this transaction on the right has got two select statements and both of them are part of the same transaction so the first select statement you know gave us the result of 10 all right after committing our transaction one what is this going to do it's going to you know make that change permanent in the DB so the committed data will be 8 so now when we issue our second select statement look at what we get we get a value of 8 okay so these two select statements are part of the same transaction but we are getting a different value for each select statement so here we are getting statement level read consistency so just before the select statement began whatever is the committed data that will be retrieved okay with read committed snapshot isolation level now let's see how things are going to change when we use um, snapshot isolation now to use snapshot isolation we will have to let's go ahead and commit our transaction to so let's change the database to use snapshot isolation so let's turn off 
read committed snapshot and again to do that we'll have to close all the other windows so let's close SQL Server Management Studio instance 2 and the statement execution completed now let's turn on snapshot isolation at the database level and let's fire up SQL Server Management Studio again and let's paste our queries there sample db is the database now we want to use snapshot isolation and let's do the same thing for our transaction too okay so the same idea let's execute part of our transaction first of all let's select what we have in the inventory it's 8 let's change it to a value of 10 select that and let's try and change it back to a value of 8 so let's execute part of our transaction 1 and let's execute part of our transaction 2 so the last committed data is 10 so that is what we are going to get and let's commit our transaction and let's see what we get now look at that we are still getting a value of 10 okay and let's commit this transaction to and now let's go ahead and issue the same select statement so tbl inventory where id equals one and let's see now what we get look at that now we get a value of eight okay so if you look at you know the snapshot isolation it's giving us transaction level read consistency so these two select statements are part of the same transaction so whatever was the committed value in the database before this transaction begin that's what you will get you know throughout that transaction whereas with read committed snapshot isolation level we get statement level um, read consistency okay so that's the fourth difference between these two isolation levels so here we have an example that shows statement level read consistency that we get with read committed snapshot isolation level and here transaction level read consistency that we get with snapshot isolation thank you for listening and have a great day